I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the CCNA 5-Minute Practice Exam. And you CCNP candidates need to watch this one as well, because today's topic is ether channels. I want to invite you, of course, out to the website, Bryant, thebryantadvantage.com slash tutorials.htm. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, please come out to the certification channel we've got out there. Uh, just about a hundred videos now for you to watch on whatever particular certification exam you're working on, whether it be the CCNA, CCNP, or Network Plus 2009. Also, I want to mention that I run a free Ether Channel webinar every month. It's about an hour in length. We go over a little bit of STP theory, a little bit of review there. We talk about why you would need to create an Ether Channel, and then I create one live right there in the webinar where today, because of the time constraints, I have pre-configured it so we can look at it while we're answering these questions. Uh, that the Ether Channel webinar always fills up. You do not need a credit card to register. You do not need a microphone, but you do need to register in advance. So I invite you to, to visit ccnawebinars.htm out at our main website, thebryantadvantage.com. Check out the dates and make sure to register today because that one always books solid. Now let's get to the questions today. What is the minimum and maximum number of trunks you can place into an Ether Channel? There is a minimum and a maximum. Question two, what command do you use to place a trunk into an ether channel? Because the odd thing about ether channels on the router, excuse me, the switches of course, is that you don't actually type the word ether channel in very often. Got a multiple choice one for you here. If one link inside an ether channel goes down, what is the net effect? And you see your choices there, and when we're going through the answers, we'll actually do that so we can see it happen live. Question four, when an interface does go into error disabled state, regardless of whether you're working on an ether channel or not, because there are other reasons it can do that, what do you have to do to make the port come out of that state? And we are assuming the defaults are in place. Then finally, question five, when you run show config, you will not see an interface called an ether channel. What logical interface will be created when you configure an ether channel? And we'll take a look at that live as well in just a moment. Let's go over the answers now. And what is the minimum and maximum number of trunks you can place into an ether channel? I'll show you, I've got two switches here. I've already pre-configured an ether channel and I've got three trunks that I've placed inside that ether channel. This is one of the times we are actually going to run an ether channel command that has the word ether channel in it. And I'll just run show ether channel summary. That's going to give you a little bit of information. And of course, anytime we see the word detail, we know that's going to give you a lot of information. And the reason I wanted to show you this, show ether channel detail, is you can see not only the number of ports you have in your ether channel, but also max ports. And you can see the max ports value is eight. That's the maximum number of trunks you can put in an ether channel. The minimum is two. What command is used to place a trunk into an ether channel? And I'll show you the quick config here. We're going to run that twice today, but you can also see the actual command that I put on these three ports to put it into an ether channel. It's channel group one mode on. And let's use iOS help here to take a look at our options. Again, it's an interface level command, channel group. Then you're going to give it a channel group number. And of course, they have to match among trunks that you're putting in the same ether channel. Then you're actually going to have to type the word mode. And then you'll either enter one of these LACP or PAGP options or just enter the word on. You CCNP candidates should be familiar with those two protocols and what the differences are and how to activate them for an ether channel. But for you CCNA candidates, the only one you need to be concerned with right now really is the on option. And that's what I used here. If one link inside an ether channel goes down, what is the net effect? Well, we're in a lab environment. This is the fun part. Let's actually go in there and see. First, I'll run show spanning VLAN 1. That's the only data VLAN we've got on this particular switch or in this ether channel. And you can see the cost is 9. And we've got something called P01 here on the interface, where normally you would see FAST0, 10, FAST0, 11, and FAST0, 12, because those are the interfaces that are trunking. 
So we'll take a look at what that PO1 stands for in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is administratively shut down one of the ports we've got in the ether channel. And we should expect to see a little message about, you know, yep, there it goes. The interface goes down the line, protocol goes down. But if we run show spanning VLAN 1, notice that the port didn't go down. It didn't have to go through listening and learning mode, anything like that. That's one of the beautiful things about an Ether channel is that we didn't lose connectivity, but the cost goes up because, of course, we have less bandwidth available. So the net effect there is that the EC will stay up, but the port cost will increase. Question four, anytime you've got a port in error disabled state, of course, you need to correct the reason why it went into error disabled state, and then you are going to have to shut the port down and manually reopen it to reset the port. So that's something we also do live in my Ether Channel webinar. You'll want to see that and see why an interface might go into error disabled state when you're building an Ether Channel. Then finally, when you run show config, you're not going to see an interface called an Ether Channel. What you will actually see is that P01 there, and in your config, and you'll see this created, when you create an Ether channel, you'll see a message on the screen, interface port channel 1. And the port channel interface is a logical interface just like the loopback, and that is your logical representation of an Ether channel. Hope you enjoyed today's five minute practice exam. I think we went over the five minute mark there, but that's fine because Ether Channel is very important to know about those for real world networking and, of course, for your certification exams. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the webinars.